Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Grenner Power 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So let's get this open. So we have a manual here. Looks like some bolts, terminal bolts, and the battery itself. Let me get the battery out. So this has built-in handles. Now I just grabbed the bag to pull it out of the box. You could cut this open and pull the handles up if you need to. So this is a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery with 1280 watt hours. The chemistry on this is lithium iron phosphate. This is in a similar format as an automotive battery. So this would be sized for a group 24 battery. Now this is not made as a starter battery for your car. A battery like this could be used for RVs, trolling motors, boats, solar setups. Oftentimes these can replace deep cycle lead acid batteries. The advantage of lithium iron phosphate is you can use the whole capacity of the battery. With lead acid, you don't want to really drop below say 50%. You can also get thousands upon thousands of charge cycles out of these. So let's take a look at the manual. So this is a promotional piece it looks like talking about their other products. This is kind of a service guide. So this is something you might store in an RV or boat. So if someone is servicing it later, they can see the specs. So nominal voltage on this is 12.8 volts. Capacity is 100 amp hours. Capacity at 20 amps is 300 minutes. So that would be five hours. Energy is 1280 watt hours. Resistance is less than 10 milliohms. Self discharge is less than 3% per month. It has prismatic cells. Here we have the dimensions and the weight. One nice thing about lithium iron phosphate, it's very lightweight compared to lead acid. So this is 27.5 pounds. Has M8 terminals. Recommended charge current is 20 amp. Maximum charge current is 100 amp. And we have other specs listed here. You can pause and read through those. So it says here there's 4,000 cycles at 100% depth of charge. So if you don't do a 100% depth of charge, you should get even more cycles than that. Has a built-in 100 amp BMS. So this has overcharge, over discharge, over current, and short circuit protection. You can hook multiple together. So you can do 4P, 4S. So that means you can have four in parallel and then, or four in series. So you could use those together. So you have four in parallel and put those in series. So you'd have 16 batteries and that will give you a total of 20,048 kilowatt hours. It also has heat tolerance up to 60 C, so that would be 140 F. Then we have a little operation guide that says use insulating gloves. It's stored at 30 to 50% capacity and they recommend charging it to 100% before you use it. So there's a ton of information on that card there. Let's see what the manual has in it. So this looks like a lot of the same things. So it had two packages of bolts. It looks like they're different sizes. It says they're 12 and 16 millimeter and those are M8 bolts and the thread pitch is 1.25. And then we have a lot of the same things we saw on that quick card. So it says the best way to install this is the upright orientation. It says the battery can be placed in the following orientations. It can do upright. You can put it on the short sides, on either side, or the long side with the positive side up. So if you do it on the side, you want the terminals up so it's not resting on the components in the battery. Then this talks about using it in parallel. This talks about connecting it up. So if you're doing a parallel setup, you're gonna have wires going between the batteries and then you want to use the positive off one end and the negative off the other. This talks about wire cabling. So you want to make sure you use the correct cabling size. This talks about discharge characteristics. This talks about battery charging. So it shows the charging curve. So this talks about lead acid charging. So this is so you can see the contrast of how the two different chemistries charge. So this talks about charge controllers, battery chargers. This shows the battery capacity based on voltage. So this may not be super accurate, the best way to track a lithium iron phosphate battery is to use a shunt. Here's some troubleshooting here. So there could be situations where the BMS will shut the battery off and you want to use a zero volt charging function charger to turn it back on. So that will apply a voltage to the battery to turn the BMS back on. And here we have storage and shipping and more notes here. Okay. So it has some protectors on these terminals. Let's unscrew those. So we have positive here, negative there, and we have two sets of bolts get these out. So these use a 13 millimeter wrench and I don't like to use long wrenches that can bridge the terminals. Probably the best thing to use would be an insulated wrench but even with the short wrench when I'm tightening down I like to hold the wrench off to the side. You could have situations where you have something screwed into there where you could bridge that. So these are going to thread into here and I didn't see a torque in the manual. I might have missed it. It's probably I don't know maybe 10 newton meters or so. So I'll screw these terminals in. Now I haven't cranked down on them tight but they're in there pretty firm. 
The first thing I'm going to do is charge this up. So I have a battery charger here, and this charger was provided to me for a previous video, but they have no association with this video. So with this charger, I'll plug into it, and different chargers will have different ways they do this. But this one, to charge lithium, I'll hit mode until it goes to 12 volt LFP. So that's in lithium mode. And with this charger, I actually have to turn it on and set it before I put the clamps on. So now I'll clamp on to both terminals. I like to give it a little wiggle there. And that should register. So we're at 13.5 volts. Now that will vary depending on the state of charge of this. So I'm going to let this run and get charged up and then we'll go about testing it. Okay, so this is finished charging. It's actually the next day. And this is not a high amperage charger. This is a four amp charger. It's just the one I had closest when I plugged it in. If I look at my meter here, we put in 860 watt hours. So that'd be about 67% of the battery. Now there are going to be losses here, so we probably didn't put quite that much in, but it gives you a rough idea. So now I'll test it with a load. Okay, so I have the battery here and I have a 1000 watt inverter. So I'll get this connected up. Now I may not cover every single thing, so you'll want to do your own research if you're setting up a system like this. Now before I hook this up, I'm going to use this resistor and this is off and I'll touch this here and that will pre-charge the capacitors in here. Now I've already done that recently, so it shouldn't be a big issue. And on a smaller inverter, it's not as big of a deal, but if you were to hook up a larger inverter, it can be important to do that. And I'm not teaching you how to do that. I'm just saying that you'll probably want to research that so you can figure out the proper procedure. So I'll hook up the negative here. Now, typically I would have a fuse hooked up here. When you put a fuse in a system like this, you're going to want to size it for the wire. I'm just doing this temporarily. Okay, so I have positive to positive, negative to negative. So I can turn the inverter on now. So I'll flip this to, I think, one. Status lights are on, so we should have live power. And I'll plug in this fan. So this is a little fuse extractor, but it has a fan on it. So I'll turn it on. And now we're running that fan. So a 1000 watt inverter connected up this battery should be able to power most fridges. A lot of fridges might take 100 watts when they're running or so and the defrost mode might pump up to, you know, 800, 900, 1,000. So you have 1,200 watt hours. So 1,200 watt hours would work to about 12 hours of running the fridge continuously, but fridge is cycle. So a battery like this with an inverter could potentially run it for 24 hours. It's hard to say exactly, as there are many variables involved. So if you actually do want to set up an emergency system to run your fridge, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get a system, put it together, and plug your fridge into it, and check it every once in a while and see how long it'll run. So then in a situation where you have to run it, you'll know your runtime. So the components you need aside from the battery would be the inverter, and then you need some kind of charger to charge this back up. In this situation, you can buy devices that are chargers and inverters. So let's try a different setup with this. Here I have a 12 volt socket adapter. So this has terminals built into it. It also has a built-in fuse. It's a 15 amp fuse. We're going to hook red to positive, and the black with the red stripe will go to negative. So we have a very simple setup here. We have a fuse, and here we have a 12 volt outlet. If I can get this open, there we go. So there's lots of things you can do with this. Here I have a power adapter. I can plug that in here, and we can see that's lit up. There's lots of different adapters. You can plug a phone in here and charge it. This one has 65 watt power delivery. So I have a laptop here. I'll plug that in. And here we're powering the laptop. So I know this is a huge battery with this little adapter on it, but if you were somewhere remote and you needed to power a laptop for a long time, this would be a great setup. Now with an adapter like this that goes from 12 volt to the 65 watt PD, you don't have to run a large inverter to run this load. So you're gonna have minimal losses. Now it's probably taking a little bit of power when I don't have anything plugged into this because there's a little light on. Of course, you can pull this out and this isn't going to have a lot of standby draw on it. You can also put a switch into this system, but this is going to be very efficient. It doesn't have the big conversion losses from an inverter. So this can be a great setup. This could be used for all sorts of other things. You could put inflators, uh, CB radios, and other 12 volt accessories you would typically plug into a car. With a simple adapter like this, you can take this lithium iron phosphate battery and have a ton of 12 volt power on demand. Okay, so I have a setup here. I have the battery, I have the inverter, and that's plugged into an air cleaner. 
and this little white box here is an energy monitor. So I'll turn this all on. I'm going to turn up the air cleaner and I'll let this run till the battery is depleted and we'll see how much power we got. Now we are going to have the loss from the inverter here. So we need to take that into account when we look at the numbers. Okay, so I have a low voltage cutoff on the inverter. Let's see where we're at. So I'm at 11.29 volts. Now let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, so here's the energy monitor, and we started this right at 7 o'clock, so that makes the math easy. This ended at 2.30. So we got seven and a half hours runtime out of this. So it says consumption here is 1.19 kilowatt hours. So the rated capacity is 1,280. So I'll do the math there. But we got 92% of the rated capacity. So as I said before, we're running this through an inverter, which will have losses. So that makes a lot of sense. So we had an 8% loss for the inverter. That seems very good to me. Let's look at the energy consumption of this. I've added two more charts here. So here we have the amps. So it was going between 1.46 and 1.47 amps. But you can see it was very steady. Now for the voltage, we have 107.8 volts. And when it turned off, we had 107.3, 107.7. So the voltage was very steady across the whole time it was running. So in some ways, we're looking at the stats from the inverter, but the battery was supplying the power for the inverter. So I think there's a good representation that the battery can keep up with the inverter. If this voltage had dipped here, it could potentially be the inverter, but it could also be the battery. The fact that it was steady, I think is a very good sign that this battery can hold up to outputting that power. Now that the battery is depleted, I do want to charge it up at least to some extent because I don't want to leave it at zero because it's not great for the battery to leave it at zero for storage. So that's the Grenner Power 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now I just shared a couple examples of what you can use this battery for. This battery would work great in an RV for trolling motors. You can use this in many applications where you would typically use a 12 volt lead acid battery with probably the biggest exception being using it as a starter battery. This is not good for starting your car. You could add this as a second battery in your car to run accessories. You have to have the proper wiring, obviously. Of course, this would work well in an RV, for a trolling motor, different carts and such. The big advantage of this is that you're going to be able to use the full capacity of the battery, and you're going to be able to cycle this a lot longer than you would with a traditional lead acid battery. So even if you don't have a big RV or camper, you could use a battery like this to do something like power a portable fridge. This would run a portable fridge for a very long time, and you would just need the battery and that socket adapter to plug it in, and then you would need a lithium iron phosphate compatible charger to charge it up. You can get those in low power versions or very high powered versions. Something around 20 amp is probably ideal. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.